Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Beautiful weather outside, unlike what happened and transpired last night at Bell MTS Place. We'll get to that in a second. What can we say, though, about the uh, opening regular season game for the Winnipeg Jets? Was it a hockey game? You tell me. If you watched the whole thing, you clearly saw there was a lot about uh, cut and paste, ugly hockey, blaming each other, uh, looking at each other as if, well, that was your guy, that was my guy. 7-2 to was the final. Uh, clearly, Toronto was the much better team last, year, last night. Uh, power play was 0 for 8. Clearly was looking for some relief there from the Winnipeg Jets because they had scored so many goals during the preseason. But that's the preseason, and this is the regular season. And unfortunately for the Jets, they can't rely on that power play, as we clearly see. The other thing we can't rely on is open nets being missed. I must have counted at least three to four goals that the Leafs scored with a wide open net or an unmarked player two to three feet from the goal line. Very poor defensive marking, whether it be a forward, whether it be a defenseman. I mean, I saw a goal that Nylander had. Uh, I think it was the third or the fourth goal, and Buffalo was on the other side in the other circle, not even paying attention. And Nylander was on the other side of the ice with a gaping net, and bada boom, bada bing, Leafs score. They scored three goals with less than three minutes in the first period, so they definitely took the lead there in the first. They continued the prowess in the second. Uh, the Jets didn't get on the board till after. There were six markers by the Leafs. I think it was Perot and Shifley that bumped in two for the third period. Uh, Patty Marlowe, two goals. JVR, Austin Matthews, both with three points for the Leafs. Uh, Steve Mason, you're not the guy just yet, but you know what? It's okay. I still have faith in you. Uh, Connor Hellebuck, I still have faith in you too. But I will say that if you're going to blame either one of those two guys, you have to look yourself in the mirror because there was clearly no defensive marking, defensive side of the puck in our own end for three full periods. It was very disgusting defensive hockey as the score sees. And you have to look at it and say, okay, that's the first game. Now we go three on the road. Whether or not there was lots of pressure, I don't know. Nick Ehlers, you just signed 42 million bucks of the Jets' hard-earned money. Uh, didn't see on the ice that much. Oh, well. Uh, do I agree with Connor, uh, Kyle Connor being sent down to the moose? We'll see what happens there in the next couple of games. Regardless, pick up your socks, get your skates sharpened, redo those sticks, start playing some uh, goaltending between the pipes. You're going on the road for three games, going out west. Starting on Calgary Saturday night, puck drop is like 8 o'clock. So, yeah, let's get the show on the road here. Let's start playing some hockey instead of some foosball or some bubble hockey as it looked like because that was awful. Uh, what was this is the fact that you listen to the fans. I mean, I thought our fans were a little more educated, but I mean, when you're yelling shoot after every single pass is being made, especially during a power play, you have to ask yourself two questions. One, well, maybe three questions. One, have I ever played hockey? Two, do I know what a power play is supposed to be? And three, maybe these seats aren't as worth as much as these seats are supposed to be paid for. You can answer those questions however you wish. Uh, the product on the ice, I know it's the first game, was not resembled on how much effort has been put into the putting this team together. I know Chevy, I know Paul have put together 12 good forwards and 6 good D and 2 d good decent goaltenders. They got to put it together, they got to start putting the gel in and hopefully it'll fix itself by the weekend. Theo the Juggernaut saying have a good Thursday. Uh, that was the Jets report. Bombers take on the Hamilton Ticats tomorrow night at home. Just one question with regards to that. Uh, keys, key, well, sorry, the keys of the game actually is going to be Matt Nichols controlling the ball and letting Andrew Harris run the rock and catch the rock just like he always does throughout the entire season. Continue with the deep ball threats. Hamilton's secondary is ugly. They allow the long ball so well. If you watched their last game against Toronto, Ricky Ray was putting it lights out and that's why Toronto came back in the fourth quarter eventually winning that game last week. So if we've learned anything from Hamilton's defense, there's some big Swiss cheese holes in there, bigger than the Bombers secondary, and our defense is going to be a lot more stingier, and we're going to hopefully get on that uh, Mazzoli guy a lot sooner Friday night. Look for the Bombers. They're going to win this game on Friday, I'm pretty sure. Let's see how much they win it by. In front of their home fans, in front of some great weather tomorrow. Let's take out these Ticats. Let's go 9 out of the next 10, and uh, let's go 6-1 and one at home. Let's go, boys. Uh, Mo Leggett, hope you get to play. Hopefully it's up to you to play. Um, I mean, Foggy played pretty well too, so regardless, we've got a really strong defense, really good offense. I think we won't have very little problems unless we decide to play Kitty Cat and loosen up against them tomorrow night.
talk to you later. Enjoy the games tomorrow. Enjoy the great weather. And happy Thanksgiving.